Welcome back. It is now time to speak again to the Paymaster General Penny Mordaunt, not oddly enough a Treasury uh, Minister, uh, but she works in the powerhouse of government, the Cabinet Office. And some of you may also remember her from Splash, where she helped raise money for service charities. And if you didn't know, it's one of the things I like most about her, is that she's also a Royal Navy Reservist, and she takes it very, very seriously. She believes that Brexit and getting out of the coronavirus gives the UK a real chance of a great Great new start. Just have a look at this first. These are difficult times, but nothing compared with what previous generations faced. They fought for freedom, not just for them, but for the whole of humanity. You can face anything with freedom. It is the light through which the human soul sees, and it is the very essence of us. I so wanted to have that on because it speaks to an awful lot of what I personally believe in uh, and it also speaks greatly to what GB News is all about and we'll talk in detail about some of the issues in that uh, in a moment but first um, I have to ask you to put your traditional as it were news hat on as well um, but before we do that Paymaster General it, it used to be the person who signed the checks for the Navy way 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 back way back and then merged over yes well um don't think you're you're ignorant in not knowing what paymaster general does because nobody <laughs> does that mean you can do whatever you want myself. because it's a it's a role that sometimes sits in the cabinet office yeah. sometimes it sits in treasury and it does a whole raft of yeah. things um but on my shift i look after cyber security yeah uh, our civil t contingencies yeah. and resilience, yeah. so all the stuff... And you, but you also work very closely with Lord David Frost on, on I do. Brexit and trade so deals. He's in the Lords and I'm yeah. his Commons Minister. Okay, we'll come to that, come to that uh, in, in just a moment, but, but first things first, I mean the papers, other than football, uh, are still all over Chesham and Amersham, and the thing I think is most intriguing is that it's being described as a wake-up call on public spending, on planning, and on HS2. Conservatives here just didn't think that you, collectively, were Conservatives anymore. Well, you can't please all of the people all of the time, but what the Prime Minister has done is please more of the people most of the time, which is why he's Prime Minister. And if you listen to his comments after that by-election result, and also the, the party chairman's piece in, the, in yeah. the Telegraph today, they are talking about the whole nation. Mm. Uh, in fact, your theme this morning, whether it's the NHS or supermarket services, it's about catering for the whole nation. And that is what he's focused on. I mean, I represent one of the most southern seats in the country, with the, the most southern seat with the exception of the Isle of Wight. We're putting together a levelling up fund bid. Mm because there are lots of communities in the South which still need uh, support and need that help to come out of the, the terrible time we've had through. But, but it, take the one specific example of that on, on housing. I mean, Portsmouth has got big housing estates, Hilsey and all of that. It's also got pretty nice houses and so on and so forth. What the people of Chesham and Amersham seem to be saying is you're going to build more houses than we need rather than doing it up north where there are brownfield sites and you're going to run a bloody great railway through us. Well, I think Conservatives have always been very interested in these issues. We've yeah. always been interested in not just housing numbers, but that architecture and a huge amount of work mm. has been done by MHG. But also, crucially, protecting the environment Absolutely. and the greenfield sites. Absolutely. Uh, and I think that is incredibly important to us, but it's also important to lots of other people who aren't mm. uh, Conservatives as well. And so we've got to get that balance right. Um, and uh, the Prime Minister is very focused on this sure. issue. But yeah, the Amanda yeah. Milling article in the Telegraph, would say, the chair of your party, would seem to suggest, yes, we've got to get that balance right, and the Prime Minister himself said, but we haven't got it right at the moment. We're going to have to go back a bit and tweak. I think that's right. I yeah. mean, successful political parties sure. and successful policies and successful politicians listen. Yeah. And uh, we always want to be doing better. So I think that will happen. Okay. Um, but I think it's right that we're also focused on other parts of the country which haven't uh, necessarily had the, the focus that they've needed Understood. Over, over many decades. Takes us neatly to another of your responsibilities and then to other great big beautiful bits of the country, and that's Scotland and Wales. Farmers there are deeply concerned that your friend Liz Truss uh, and, uh, has cut a deal uh, that, that is very nearly 
really there with Australia. Looks like being there as well with New Zealand, which might make tomorrow's Sunday lunch cheaper for folk at home, but could well put people out of work uh, in Scotland and Wales if they're in farming. Misjudged? Well, I think a lot of the concerns that people have, they'll be reassured when they actually see the detail of what Liz and her colleagues have. Not, not helpful that the acting Australian Prime Minister said it's a win-win-win. Well, deals should be a, a win for both sides. I mean, that's, the, that's why we wanted to come out of the EU, because we wanted to forge these new uh, agreements. And there will be massive opportunities for uh, farmers uh, once those deals are mm. signed, and they, they will also open up the possibility for, for more. But I think... Uh, we, we're at the stage of the agreement where it's been agreed, yeah. uh, but not ratified. But the detail may be a little more helpful than uh, we've I been led so. to believe now. For that. example, a lot of people also care about animal welfare, yeah. and you'll see a whole chapter on that on sure. that particular issue. Okay. So wait, wait until you see the detail, but it's been a really good piece of work by both Liz and, yeah. and George Eustace, who's looking after their interests. Who, uh, DEFRA minister and himself a farmer. Um, uh, who blinked over Northern Ireland and the protocol and sausages? So nobody blinked. If you, if you look at the trade... Dublin are saying you're absolutely wonderful and Brussels are saying, oh, good, we can now relax a bit. Somebody blinked. If you look at the detail of the trade agreement that we agreed when we, when we left the EU, there are some very clear principles in there about the proportionality of mm. the checks and balances that we put in place to mm. protect yeah. the EU's single market. Yeah, I mean, and the intriguing thing, important. and we've talked about this before, uh, and you've written about it as well, is that, is that curiously, the importance of trust, uh, you know, and, and my word is my bond in the city and all of that stuff. This is about getting Brussels to trust UK traders and Dublin to trust UK traders. Why don't Brussels trust us? Well, I think uh, they should, because we've been trading with them for a very long period of time. And, and this huge is trade so partners with them. I mean, the scale's enormous. Absolutely. And this is what's so uh, um, aggravating to people, uh, that all of a sudden these checks have had to be put in place. But they're totally out of kilter with the actual risk. Mm. And Worse than Rotterdam, they keep saying. That we have. It's in the trade agreement very, very yeah. clearly. But is what's happened in the last few days an attempt to avoid sausages trade war, as it were? And I know that's silly jargon, but it's what folk at home will completely understand because they've read all about it in the papers. Is it buying time? Or is your strategy and David Frost's that if we spin this out, it'll die and everything will be hunky-dory anyway? No, there are lots of issues that we've got to work through. And actually, the only way we can do this without having to do something very dramatic is to methodically work through these issues in the committee that exists. It's called yes. the Withdrawal Agreement Joint Committee, and it has lots of specialised committees which look at all of these things in detail. That's where we've got to uh, focus on this. And uh, indeed, we had, we had one of those meetings uh, a few weeks ago, and mm. that's what we were talking about. Um, but I, I always believe throughout all of the turmoil of Brexit that we would we would get through it and we would get through it and end up with something sensible because actually that is what is in our interests sure. and our, our no, business interests but also uh, members uh, of the EU as well and their, their constituents so yeah. we'll, we'll get there. Okay. When will it be quotes oven ready close quotes? Well it, it, <laughs> it is oven ready I think, uh, I think we've, uh, we've pressed go on the microwave some time ago but in all seriousness, we, we have a, a huge transition yeah. and it, it has taken an incredible amount of work by the civil service, an incredible amount of work by business yeah. to, to get it ready. And we really want to maximise the opportunities sure. of this. So, yes, it's been a bit bumpy, if you like. It's, it's a bit of a metaphor with uh, GB News. You know, you've had a few acorn antiques moments, <laughs> but you're, you're ploughing on and the public are with you because they recognise what it is you're trying to do. And it's the same with Brexit. Whether people supported it or not, the country's come together because that's what the country decided it wanted to do. And we are delivering on that. And having gone through five years of, of all of that, we, we now have to really deliver the opportunities that come with it. And that is what the Prime Minister and Liz Truss and the whole team are focused on. Sure. Final one, and briefly, uh, your former Defence Secretary and, and Navy gal through and through. Um, are you sad that HMS QE, the, the, the fantastic huge aircraft carrier, is sailing 
east of Taiwan and not between China and Taiwan. It looks like a bit of a white flag and not a white ensign. No, I, I don't think so. Um, and actually, if you look at the whole route uh, that she has taken on mm. that deployment, uh, it, it, is, it is capturing exactly what our uh, defence priorities are. So she's done some work with NATO in, mm. the, in the MED. Uh, she's doing a huge amount of uh, work, particularly in the, uh, in the Far East. Uh, it, it is exactly what we should be doing. Um, we're not there to be deliberately provocative uh, to people, uh, but we've been very clear about what our policies are, um, and in particular about uh, about those those navigation rules, Brilliant. and uh, but she doesn't have to, to sail there to, to make that point. She's big enough; you can see her from quite a distance, anyway. Um, I would love you to stay precisely where you are, uh, and I've got lots more I want to talk to you about, uh, particularly your vision for Britain after that Brexit uh, that you talked about and also after the coronavirus. But for now, uh, Penny Morden, thank you very much indeed. Uh, we have also, as Penny was kind enough to point out, been talking about our big story throughout the show. You've heard what I think. Uh, and at 2 p.m., I want to hear what you think. Uh, if you haven't already, then do please email us at gbviews at gbnews.uk or get in touch on Twitter. Uh, you can also do it on Instagram and indeed on Facebook. Lots more still to come, including more from my friend Evie MP and Paymaster General Penny Mordant, right after the weather. And Saturday will be dry and rather cloudy for many. Some sunny spells will develop, mainly in the north and west. Showers will also affect southern and western areas this afternoon. It'll be a cooler feeling uh, day uh, than of late. But in the sunshine, the temperatures could still reach 20 or 21 degrees Celsius. Uh, through this evening, outbreaks of showery rain will move northwards from the near continent across the English Channel to affect southern areas of England and Wales overnight. Uh, the rain will be heavy at times and possibly thundery, especially in the east. The rain will be accompanied by low cloud, which will produce some coastal and hill fog. Elsewhere, after a dry and bright evening, cloud will gradually increase from the south, with showers likely to develop over western Scotland later in the night. Some clear spells are also likely, mainly in the north, and here a little mist or fog is possible. A mild night for many, especially in the south. A little cooler under the clearer skies up there in the north. Welcome back. My friend Penny Mordant is still with me, and like me, she feels very strongly that Brexit and Covid give us all a chance at a new start. And she's written a book, Greater Britain After the Storm, and it's co-authored by Chris Lewis, and is a celebration of the United Kingdom, but also an agenda for radical change. Here's the celebration bit. I love that. Very James Bond, somebody said in my ear. But those of us of a certain age will know it was the Avengers, Steed and Emma and all of that stuff. So the assertion basically is that we're a beautiful country with bold ambitions, a proud and trusted people. But we muddle along, self-effacing, in denial, polite and apologetic. But deep down, we are great. We just need refocusing. Is that a reasonable encapsulation of the philosophy behind the book you wrote with Chris? Well, I can't, I can't talk about the book, yeah. but um, okay. you're right, if it, there's, lots, there's lots that we have to celebrate, and if people yeah. want to, to learn a bit more about that and some surprising facts, they can go to uh, gogreater.org yeah. or find us on Twitter, and they'll be able to see lots more of those, those sorts of videos. But I, I do think that you are, are right. We have, we have a real opportunity now. This is a real moment mm. for our country. 
we've got Brexit uh, done, although a few things to still uh, get over the line. Uh, and we're forging our way uh, across the world with trade deals. But we're also coming out of this in incredible pandemic, which has, mm. in some respects, actually strengthened our communities. It's brought them together. Mm. Um, but there's so much more that we've, we've got to do to be able to catch up from it. So we need a moment yeah. to really think, how are we going to become more effective? How are we really going to be able to deliver on the things that we, we want to see, not just in our neighbourhoods, but also what we want to do around yeah. the world. I mean, well. we had an astrologer on earlier on who was saying about Boris Johnson that, that he's pragmatist. If things come along, he deals with them or whatever. Not necessarily uh, an evident strategy. But what you're saying, it seems to me, is that it, it, if we want to get through all of this, Brexit and the coronavirus, then we need a strategy. We've already had the chair of the Royal College of GPs on this programme saying, yeah, we've got to fundamentally rethink what we do and how we do it. I think you heard that tail end of that conversation as well. This is what they call a tipping point, a tipping moment for the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, is it not? Well, I think it is an opportunity. And you, you can see the political landscape shifting as, yeah. as well. Um, old divisions between left and right are breaking down. Uh, the Labour Party is working out what it's uh, going to be about in the, in the future. And I think the real division in politics now is, is not whether you believe in capitalism or not. It's whether you're an optimist or you're a pessimist. Yeah. Uh, whether you believe in democracy and, and what it can deliver and whether you believe in, in capitalism. And the reason why belief in those systems is important mm. is because they're like Tinkerbell's light. If you don't believe them, they fail. But you're a conservative, big C and little c. You supported Brexit, you were in favour of that. And yet you also believe passionately that the way we do economics, capitalism as you called it there, mixed market, whatever you like to call it, and the way we do politics need reforming and in some instances reinventing, that's not terribly conservative, that's radical. Well, I think that conservatism isn't about protecting the status quo and, uh, and not making progress. Um, it's about recognising the things that were good about the past. Uh, we, in Britain, I think, uh, we're often accused of being nostalgic, but we're not nostalgic for outside loos or scurvy or uh, Vesta Chow Mein or you know, anything else like that. We're, we're nostalgic about things that we were proud about. And I think we want the future to look a bit like the past, but better. And the thing is now, the challenge that we have is that the world is changing so fast. Yes. Uh, that we have to pick up the pace on some sure. of these things. But I think you, you'll see that's what's happening yeah. in government. I mean, just to give you an example, the focus that's been on really getting Whitehall to, to try and move at the pace that science needs us to do, uh, to really capitalise on the incredible... Yeah. I mean, we've got a film about... Well, Public Health England had to try and run to catch up with what Kate Bingham and her lot were doing up at Oxford Absolutely. University. So... So we, we, we've just got to pick up the pace. But I think that that is what government is trying to do. And indeed, all the reforms that are going on about Whitehall and, uh, uh, and, and changing how that operates mm. and, and making it more relevant to certain sure. parts of the country. Final quick one on that. When I listened to Dominic Cummings give his evidence um, a, a few weeks back with Steve Baker and, and, and on that particular committee, um, but I was less interested in the, you know, Hancock's a, not a good egg or whatever it might be, or Johnson was running around like a headless chicken, is that he said our system of government simply is not up to muster. You think that as well, and, and, and you've argued it very fiercely. Is there an appetite amongst our leaders, amongst the ruling class, be it Labour or Tory or Liberal Democrat, to actually take a deep breath and say, yeah, the very system that put us where we are, we're going to reinvent. Well, I think people have said that for a, a long time. And that's not to say that there aren't great people working mm. in the civil service. Uh, my civil contingencies team are amazing. Utterly brilliant, in I agree. Office. But uh, there is a recognition that we, we need to modernise. We need to pick up the pace on these things. But also, um, that doesn't just mean reforming Whitehall. It means letting other people help. Uh, and I think that you've got lots of commentators, left and right, saying that we need some big national missions because it's not just about that long-term vision and strategy that you point to. It's about asking other people to step in. Uh, we don't have all the answers, um, but someone else does. And I think the public's frustration with politics mm. is not that they think we're all 
bunch of useless people. It's that they have answers and solutions that they're not able to, to contribute. You said that Mo Molems, one of my great heroes, heroines, as you well know, um, amongst her greatest strengths were her ordinariness and the fact that she listened. But she didn't only listen, she acted. That's what's a little bit lacking at the moment, isn't it? I remember at the time, um, actually, there were some journalists that were quite cruel to her when, when the peace process was, was um, nearing its uh, conclusions. And they said, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't really make great speeches. She, she just goes around and makes tea uh, for people. And uh, what they didn't realise was that actually her behaviour created an environment that people could talk it changed the mood uh, about things. And so I think that's, a, that's an underestimated uh, quality in politicians. Um, and I think it's actually one that the, the Prime Minister has. His uh, people take the mickey out of him yeah. for his, his Tigger-like uh, behavior. But actually, that, that's what we need. It creates courage in other people to, to step in, to take a risk to do the things that the country needs us to do. Peter Hennessy, who makes a living as a brilliant history professor, says that you're one of the most accomplished parliamentarians of your generation. And Michael Dobbs, who's a mutual friend and wrote House of Cards, says you're also very funny. 20 seconds only. Have they got you right? <laughs> well, they're, they're very kind and very, very flattering. I mean, I... Uh, I, so I, think you're, I, I, I think you're a bit tough as well. Uh, I have been, I have been uh, required to be on, on occasion, but you know, the job I do is a privilege. I, I would encourage anyone who uh, wants to run for office to, to do it. So good to see you, and thank you for spending so much time. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Penny Mordaunt, and I am doing my best to be Alistair Stewart.